I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It's not just what you grow, it's where you grow it and the company it keeps. Hi, I'm Ben, and until recently, much of companion planting was based on little more than hearsay. But now there's an increasing body of research that proves that growing certain plants together can reduce incidence of pests, boost growth, and even help to attract wildlife. So come along with me as I use proven techniques to plan out my companion planting combinations for the coming growing season. First off, a bit of an explanation. Companion planting is simply when two plants are grown close together for the benefit of one or both of those plants, so the benefit can be one way or mutual. That could be as simple as growing nectar-rich flowering plants among your crops to attract pollinating insects, or something like two vegetables grown side by side to confuse or repel pests. So with that in mind, let's look at a few examples. My first companion planting combination is to tackle the green peach aphid, which is an aphid that actually infects more than 400 different species. It's resistant to more than 70 different pesticides, and if that wasn't enough, it can transmit more than 100 different plant viruses. But there is one plant that it simply can't stand, garlic. With this in mind, I'll be planting garlic around my more susceptible crops. This garlic went in last autumn and it's come on really quickly actually. I've also got some garlic in the greenhouse ready to go out. My plan is to grow uh, potatoes in between rows of garlic, which will act like sort of pungent bodyguards if you like. I'll also be saving some of these garlic to plant around my lettuces, along with anisum, which will attract insects or aphid-eating hoverflies. And uh, you can see more on that in last week's video, which I'll pop a link to down below. Tomatoes and basil, which I'm sowing here, are best friends in the kitchen, but they're also pretty good friends in the garden too. And that's because basil repels many pests, such as thrips. And if you happen to be in the US, basil also confuses the moths that lay tomato hornworms. Just like basil, there's loads of research backing up these claims. For example, folk at Iowa State University found that when basil was grown alongside tomatoes, the tomatoes got a lot less insect damage. Researchers also found that interplanting tomatoes with basil resulted in less egg laying by the army worm. So basil makes my list, and it's downright delicious too, of course. Next up are those plants we can grow to take the brunt of a pest attack so that our more susceptible and precious crops are left alone. Now for me, there's one plant that stands head and shoulders above the rest for this purpose, nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are a really, really very pretty annual flower. It can be left to sprawl around or trained up trellis to give a bit of colourful height. And the flowers are actually edible. Use them in salads, in cocktails or perhaps as cake decorations. Several insects, including cabbage family eating caterpillars, just love nasturtiums. Apparently they love the mustard oil it produces. So it makes sense to grow nasturtiums alongside vulnerable crops like cabbage, kale or broccoli, anything in the brassica family. Nasturtiums are one of those flowers that self-seed themselves from one year to the next, popping up here and there, but in this case it's a really welcome sight. My plan is to grow them alongside this bed here, which will have the kale for this coming growing season. I'll probably plant them in the path so they'll sprawl alongside them. I'm going to start them off in plug trays, grow them on, and then plant them out. There are plenty of other flowers worth growing amongst your vegetables. Plenty of other flowers. Of course, there are the nectar-rich blooms that will attract pollinators such as bees that will then go on to pollinate your crop plants such as tomatoes, squash and peas, for example. Now, great examples are the sunny side up, cheering blooms of poached eggplant, maybe comfrey, ageratum and zinnias. But flowers have many other benefits beyond attracting pollinators. One of the most powerful flowers is tansy, this obliging bloom attracts all sorts of pest-eating bugs, such as ladybugs or ladybirds, tiny parasitic wasps, and the minute pirate bug, which doesn't so much plunder the high seas as plunder other pests. At the same time, tansy repels many of the baddies. It's a great plant, very cheery, and it's a perennial, so you plant it once and it will give summer after summer of blooms. What more could you want? 
Just one word of caution though, if you are in North America, it can be very invasive, so it is banned in some states. And it can also cause a bit of an allergic reaction on some people, so do wear gloves when handling. That said, it makes the cut in my garden. Other flowers I'll be including alongside nasturtiums and tansy are marigolds and calendula, which will also attract all sorts of beneficial bugs. This is all well and good, but who has the time, honestly, to research scientifically rigorous companion planting combinations? I know I don't, which is why I love the online garden planner. Our team has spent many months, years even, exhaustively trawling through all of the peer-reviewed research in this area, separating what's proven from what's not. The result is the garden planner's evidence-based companion planting system. Let me show you. Take these cucumbers here as an example. Just select the Show Companions button and the plant list here is narrowed down to plants that are companions of cucumbers. Take this dill here as an example. The arrow goes from the dill, which means it offers benefits to the cucumbers because it attracts hoverflies, which will eat pests. So let's pick that up and drop a few of them onto our plan. There we go, perfect. Let's look at this sweet corn here as another example. Click on the Show Companions button and then, great, if you look here, you can see the beans, the benefit is in both directions because the arrow goes in both ways. And that's handy because I need something against this arch here. So let's pick up the beans, drop them down and add a row there. Lovely stuff. The garden planner takes all of the guesswork and the legwork out of finding the perfect companions for my plants. I love the fact that someone else has done the research for me, so I don't have to. Lazy? Yeah, so what? Smart? Definitely. Companion planting is a seriously powerful but crucially natural way to turbocharge your garden's growth. And with this evidence-based companion planting system, I can deploy it with ease. Now tell me, will you be making more of companion planting this season? Let me know in the comments below. Please be sure to check out our other videos on companion planting. And if you'd like more evidence-based gardening advice, then be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. We're always looking for more green-fingered and thumbed enthusiasts to join our growing band of gardeners. And we'd love you, yes you, to join us. I'll catch you next time.